Welcome to the podcast about investing in startups, where existing investors can learn how to get the best deal possible. And those that have never before invested in startups can learn the keys to success from the venture experts. Your host is Nick Moran, and this is The Full Ratchet. Welcome back to The Full Ratchet. On today's special segment of Investor Stories, the investors address trends, sectors, and markets that they think are positioned for outsized returns in the future. This is the segment called What's Next? On today's special segment, we have Jim Tannenbaum of Foresight Capital. Jim, can you talk about sectors or trends that you're bullish on? Data eats healthcare. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's our mantra. I think everywhere you look, you're going to see data playing a role in product innovation and people that understand that having an advantage. We're primarily looking for entrepreneurs and companies that get that. We have plenty of fresh capital here for them and infrastructure that can help them get there faster. On today's special segment, we have John Fine of Firebrand Ventures. John, can you talk about sectors or trends that you're bullish on? Sure. You know, we call ourselves sector agnostic. Love fintech. Have loved loved fintech for years. Still love it. We still think there's a huge amount of opportunity there. Several several of our, our top companies are in the fintech space. Love cyber. You know, same thing. You know, cybersecurity is just, it's, and there's so many facets to it. There's so many opportunities in different areas of cybersecurity. Those two are probably among the, the top two that we really love. And, you know, just being sector agnostic is nice because, you know, we, we get to invest in whatever teams we think are amazing. Granted, you know, we probably won't invest in anything that's super capital intensive, like biotech or pharma, medical devices. But we love any product, particularly if we invest in in B2C, but B2B also, that just where the founding team just really has an incredible focus on delighting the customer yep. with the product. And so we love teams that are deep, deep into product, whether it's technical, whether it's product management, UI, UX design, that can be in a variety of different sectors, but it's certainly something that we look for. Because think about it, How many products do any of us use that truly delight us? Of all the products that are available in the market today, if even if you just talk about software, probably not that many. Yeah, small handful for me. A handful, right? For almost anybody you talk to. I think companies like, you know, you take a look at a company like Gusto. Fantastic product. You know, just a great customer experience end to end. Their payroll. You know, it's a, it's, it's like the most unsexy <laughs> sector you can think of. It's like, why would we need another payroll company? But they, they doubled down on, on delighting the customer. And so while we do have our favorites in sectors, you know, if, if we see a team that we think really has what it takes to delight the customer, you know, we'll invest in, in almost anything where we think they're going to be head and shoulders above. <laughs> On today's special segment, we have Sarah Anderson of Centrifuge. Sarah, can you talk about how you see fund management and or venture evolving over the next decade? Yeah. So one of the things that we've been digging into a lot, and I'm sure a lot of LPs that invest in the venture space have been thinking about, are just these mega funds. SoftBank is doing to venture. Sequoia is out with these huge funds how that is affecting exit opportunities within a decent time frame, right? When you start having hundreds of millions of dollars in one round at billions and billions of valuations, it really creates a struggle to kind of exit some of the most successful companies that might be in your portfolio, which are going to be your portfolio drivers, yeah. right? Yeah. But as a, as a fund of funds, we're in it for the long run, but we have our own timeframes around when we have to get capital back to our LPs too, right? One of the things that I mentioned earlier was just about the secondaries becoming a more viable exit strategy for early stage VCs. And I think we've seen some of this already start happening in the seed market and the pre-seed market where 
investors are taking their money off the table earlier at really good returns and providing that back to LPs, I think it's definitely going to have a profound impact on venture, right? The mega funds, which don't seem to be letting up. I mean, I think SoftBank's raising a larger fund. We're seeing more investors go out and raise larger funds. But the early stage VCs are going to have to figure out and we'll have to have a process and some thoughts around, which is one thing we're adding to our diligence process, too, is to talk to managers about how they're going to exit their most successful companies, which would be the ones that are tied up in these what they call private IPOs and multi hundred million dollar rounds, how they're going to participate in those or not participate. Right. Yeah. There's a parallel here, probably a loose parallel, but a situation I'm dealing with right now, and I've seen it a couple times now, where a startup that we're looking to invest in at pre-seed has a very viable path to do an ICO. They have a business model that you know is predisposed to doing a token of some sort, and there could be mm-hmm. a tremendous value in that token, particularly a utility token. The tricky part for us is if we do a price round, at a reasonable valuation, and then they go out and do an ICO and raise 300 million bucks, our liquidity is gone. We're never going to see anything. <laughs> if we do a safe ets or safeties, whatever you call them, it's kind of like yeah. a safe plus you know, a, a token conversion, then maybe you can convert at the token offering, but then you're just kind of playing this weird little arbitrage game. So it's weird how these coin offerings as well, in addition to these late stage large funds are inverting or affecting at least the uh, the liquidity environment and creating some downstream unintended consequences. Yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, the ICO market, we'll see how ubiquitous that becomes, but I've been surprised at how ubiquitous it has become, right? I mean, it's applicable across so many different business models that can now issue tokens for their own liquidity and their own investing purposes. So yeah, it's it's an area definitely to watch. And I'm interested to know more about how it will affect venture, right? To your point, private capital. Yeah, it's weird to think about. It's almost like inverting the exit. It's like these founders are getting their exit at the beginning of the journey instead of at the end. (laughs) (laughs) So the incentives get all screwed up. Uh, Yeah. That will conclude this installment of Investor Stories. If you're enjoying the program and would like to see it continue, take a moment and leave a five-star review in iTunes. Also, if you'd like updates on new content from TFR, as well as the top 10 VC articles every week, go to fullratchet.net and sign up for the newsletter. Okay, that will wrap things up for today. Until next time, over-prepare, choose carefully, and invest confidently. Thanks for joining me.